there and welcome back to my channel, Blue Nose Trading. My name is Tori Solis and today I'm going to be working in time lapse on a series of slip painted mugs. I'm working with Laguna B Mix with Grog for the base of this project. I haven't talked about B Mix yet, so we'll do that too. Although I know that many of you are likely familiar with B Mix, it's a very popular clay body, especially in school settings. The Dallas College gave every student a bag of B Mix for ceramics classes. Once I've wedged all this clay, I'm going to throw mug bodies. For this project and what I have in mind, I'm only going to be making mugs. The B mix I worked with in the Dallas College was plain, without grog. The clay I'm throwing in this project has grog added. My first experience with B mix was that it is a dense clay and somewhat sensitive when it came to a strong need for drying slowly. I'm hoping that the addition of some grog will toughen it up a bit. Adding a bit more grit and tooth to the clay body with grog should help to reduce shrinkage and cracking by helping to slightly reduce the plasticity of this clay. Throwing with the grog version of B-Mix is already a much better experience for me personally. The clay seems to pull much easier for me and feels way less dense between my fingers. What I don't love about B-Mix in general is how slippy it gets. I'm not even sure if slippy is actually a word, but what I mean here is that I don't like how thick this clay makes my throwing water feel. This clay seems to stay suspended in the water to a greater extent than others. I had to change out my water so many times while I was throwing this clay, it was really tedious. It feels really messy. This could totally just be a sensory thing for me, but I don't like it. For these mugs and all the mugs I've made, I'm going to be pulling my handles. There are many ways to make a handle. Pulled handles are what resonate for me and so are used in my work. There's just something about a pulled handle that feels natural and comfortable to me. There are as many opinions on handles as there are ways to make handles. I'm simply making what resonates with me. I think everyone should probably make what resonates with them personally. By putting together a collection of all that is resonant with ourselves, we build the toolkit for our individual style. Trimming the bottom of these was pretty straightforward. You can feel the density of this clay when you're trimming. I would describe it as a thick feeling to the clay that can cause a bit more resistance than some other stonewares. The grog in the clay can catch while you're trimming and leave lines. The lines aren't really a big deal to me as I plan to finish the exterior and slip painting anyway. If you are worried about the lines, you can smooth them out with a rib later. I like to make the bottom of my mugs rounded with a slight foot ring. I stamp my name into the middle of the foot ring. Every once in a while a mug will end up flat bottom because I didn't leave enough clay at the bottom to carve a foot ring in. If this happens, you know, it happens. I'm not perfect. It really comes down to a matter of preference and the flat bottom mug is just as great as one with a foot ring. I drink my matcha from a flat bottom mug that I got from the Potter's Rock and Pot Swap last year. It's one of my favorite mugs. After all the pots are trimmed and the handles have sat around long enough to firm up a little bit, it is time to put the handles onto the mugs. I'm also going to be applying the base coat of slip colors. This base coat is going to set the background for the details that I will paint after the first coat has firmed up a little bit. The slip that I'm working with is my own mix of B-Mix slip without grog and some assorted mason stains. The mason stain colors I'm working with today are avocado, evergreen, canary, copenhagen blue, coral red, tangerine, turquoise, and lavender. I got my start into the arts as a painter in college. Specifically, I paint with acrylic paints onto stretch canvas. I specialize in pet portraits, so if you ever need a pet portrait done, check out my website, bluenosetrading.com, for information on commissions. I record the process and post those videos in their own playlist. Okay, shameless pet portrait ad for myself aside, I am hoping that painting with slip will feel more like painting with acrylic than underglaze. Painting with underglaze often feels like painting with watercolors. They aren't as opaque and you won't know how opaque you have the coat until it's fired. With a lot of experience, I'm sure I could get to know how opaque the underglaze would be before it's fired, but I'd also like something with more body. Painting with slip, I can create textures that aren't as easy to achieve with commercial underglaze. Don't get me wrong, I love underglaze and I use it all the time, but I'm looking for something different in painting with slips. I want to make something that creates a more real sense of texture in your hands. 
I made this series in April of 2023. I know it's much late being released, especially for those watching on YouTube. If you'd like to gain early access to my videos and work, consider becoming a supporter of my work at patreon.com slash bluenosetrading. Patrons get early access to all of my videos. It's hard to say if any of these pots are still going to be up in my shop, but if you want to see what pots are currently available for purchase, you can check out my website, bluenosetrading.com. Anyway, it was spring. I had some markets that took me down Interstate 20 to west of Dallas. Spring in Texas is one of the best parts of living here. The Texas Department of Transportation seeds the sides and medians of the highway with native Texas wildflowers. They do this to help prevent erosion and to also make the state beautiful, I would assume. They come into bloom in early spring, when the mornings are still cool and just before the trees wake up. Driving to my market filled with optimism for the weekend and the sunrise over the flowers, it was impossible not to be inspired. I kept thinking about how the flowers looked in the fields. They would sometimes pop up in giant patches of blue bonnets or in scattered mixtures of orange, yellow, and blue. They can blanket the field in their colors. I love to see them. They truly add a sense of wonder and magic to the landscape. I was interested in looking at these flowers from several different perspectives and levels of detail. As I painted these mugs, I followed different ideas in exploring how to convey the scene of flowers. There's a mug with a close-up detail of the flowers, which I broke before it got bisked. In contrast, there's a mug with the flowers are portrayed as just specks of color to reflect their quantity, distance, and size in proportion to the fields. For most of the flowers, I mixed the slips together and made my own colors that felt more appropriate. I was working on a judgment of the slips' colors while wet, which was risky. Not all stains maintain their colors when fired to cone 6. This series was an experimentation in painting with slips. Moreover, I wasn't 100% sure what each of my slips was going to look like after it was fired. There was much to learn from this work. I could have run some tests, but in reality, I need to fill my kiln to justify firing it. What can I say? I like to live dangerously and in acceptance of the consequences of potentially ugly or unexpected pots. Either way, I learn a lot. My best work is always my next work. My work is a process ongoing through time, and this series is only a glimpse of a small part of something much bigger. After bisking the mugs to cone 04, or about 1945 degrees Fahrenheit, these mugs need a bit of glaze. For glazing these, I'm planning to keep it simple. For the inside, I'm going to be using a simple coat of gloss white. I have several different clear glazes that looked okay on their test tiles that I'm going to apply to a few of the mugs. I'm also going to leave the exterior of several mugs unglazed. I tend to personally favor an unglazed mug, but I want to run tests on multiple possibilities. It'll be good to see how each of these slips performs under each of the clear glazes that I'm testing. Once the glaze has been applied, these are going to be loaded back into the kiln for their final glaze fire to cone 6, or about 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. Loading up the glaze kiln is a lot like a mini game within ceramics. None of the glaze pieces can touch anything or each other or they will fuse to whatever they touch. It's a lot of careful placement, shuffling, and nudging. Thankfully for this load, I'm near certain that none of the glazes I'm firing are at risk to run. If I had runny glazes to deal with, it would add an extra level of consideration when loading up the kiln. I'd have to put cookies under anything that I suspected of running and be extra careful how things were placed so that they didn't stick to each other. Once we have all the pots tucked in, we will close this up and fire it to temperature and unload it the next day. Looking at these right away, I can say they do not meet my vision of the work as I saw it in my head. The colors came out much darker than I had been expecting for this project, especially anywhere where I used too much of the evergreen stain. The color got very dark, too dark for what I was trying to do. The avocado green is lighter, but it's a little warmer than I would have liked for this project. The grass looks a little bit thirsty with the avocado green. It doesn't have the freshness of well-watered grass in spring that I was aiming for. It needed to be a little bit cooler and a little less warm. The turquoise for the sky is a perfect shade of blue. It's exactly what the sky looks like, so that one worked out great. The clouds are also very nice. The blue for the blue bonnet is a near perfect shade for the flower. 
Most of what I don't like about this series personally comes down to the particular shades of green achieved in firing. My favorite pieces from this set are the ones that I did not use a clear glaze. I feel like the matte unglazed colors turned out closer to what I was hoping for. In any event, I learned a good deal about how my slips fire and work together, both with and without glaze. This is all great information that I will carry forward with me into my next projects. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you enjoyed seeing the ceramic process. If you'd like to stick around for a weekly art video, be sure to subscribe to my channel, Blue Nose Trading. I post a full length video every Friday at 5.30 p.m. Central Time and daily art shorts. To help support my channel and gain early access to all my videos, consider becoming a patron of my work at patreon.com slash bluenose trading. Patrons gain early access to all my videos, but honestly, another great way to support my channel is just to go buy a pot, and you can find all of my available ceramics at bluenosetrading.com. Remember that you have great ideas that will lead you to your purpose. Drink lots of water, and I will see you guys next week.